G'day YouTube, one MJ here, welcome back. Well, market cap moving up a little bit more again, but polka dot, whew, from out of nowhere, not that long ago, people, you know, didn't really know too much about polka dot and probably didn't know it was uh, all the troubles that it had back in 2017 and things like that. But here we are, had its mainnet launch and it hasn't taken long at all and it's gone straight into the number five spot. So yeah, that is uh, moving at quite a fast rate and you know, is it even done yet? Who knows, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I got myself a few polka dot, not a lot, but I got myself a couple and it'll be interesting to see yeah, how they do over the next sort of few years and things like that, but that's one hell of a move. You know, to get to number five in a matter of, you know, sort of weeks, congratulations but what i'm really uh, pleased about is bitcoin Ten thousand, well done now not too uh long ago like only a few hours ago basically everything else was uh in the red so bitcoin was in the green uh, and everything else was the, in the red so what i am looking for at the moment is i think some of the profits that were made in the altcoins over the last few weeks and that have been taken out and are now being put into Bitcoin. So I'm really waiting to see whether we're gonna break that $11,000 mark and particularly start to push up towards that $12,000 mark again. But we'll have to wait and see. Market cap is up though, so 353 billion. Again, we're still you know, a ways off that 400 billion that we're at a while ago, but the move it's mark, the, the, sorry, the market is moving and that's good. ETH gas fees, uh, 85, not too bad. I mean, it's not great, don't get me wrong, but geez, it's been a, a, a lot higher, but I would like to see those come down at the same time. 85 guay or guay, depending on how you want to say it, I think it's guay, uh, is still a little bit expensive. But, you know, it is what it is. All right, really interesting story. So uh, I mentioned this a while ago that uh, a NASDAQ listed company, MicroStrategy, they invested in Bitcoin uh, a little while ago. I think they bought 21,000 Bitcoin. Well, they've just bought uh, another, I think $175 million worth of Bitcoin. So let's go down here. Billion dollar public company, MicroStrategy Inc. has bought 16,796 more Bitcoins. The company has purchased a total of 38,250 Bitcoins at an aggregate purchase price of $425 million. So again, they will be considered one of the early adopters now. Watch this space, because I think more are going to get on board, especially at the moment. And particularly, we saw Bitcoin was being bought up at quite a rate. Every time it sort of dropped below 10,000 over the last, you know, sort of, two weeks or so, it was being bought up very quick. I wouldn't be surprised if some big businesses uh, have been in there and buying up that at the same time. I mean, they generally aren't gonna buy from the markets as such. They'll probably go directly to the miners and things like that. But it's not to say that they wouldn't be looking on the free market for them as well. And yeah, Bitcoin did not stay under 10,000 for very long. It dipped you know, down to 9,800. Uh, 9,900, but as soon as it got down there, it was being bought up straight away. And now MicroStrategy, I think they own 0.18% uh, uh, or something. So, no, zero, it's less than 1%, but still 1% of something uh, is still a, a, a decent holding. So that is uh, very, very interesting that they've not quite doubled down as in, you know, total amount, but they have doubled down by they bought more again. They obviously have seen something and have decided this is where they want to park a majority of their capital. And their CEO did come out and say that uh, he plans to hold on it for uh, hold it for a century. So, yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting. Now, I don't think he's going to hold on to all of it for, all of it for a century. He'll be uh, trading it in the future. I have no doubt about that. But I, I don't think they'll be getting rid of um, a ton of it. It'll be, you know, in and out of the market like most other people. They'll have their sell points and they'll sell some to, uh, to keep themselves liquid. And then when it's cheap, they'll buy it back. But very, very interesting micro strategy. Again, sort of doubling down on their Bitcoin. I think we're going to hear more stories like this in the not too distant future. I think there'll be another, a number of other 
uh, publicly traded companies that are co going to come out and do the same, you know, put maybe 1% of their total wealth into Bitcoin. And when those things start to happen, watch the price go absolutely mental. Uh, again, I have no idea what price uh, uh, it will go to and I don't like to make uh, predictions because, you know, predictions, it's, it's a guess. It's nothing more than a guess. And I could guess any number. I could say, oh, it's going to 10 million. And look, someday in 100, 200 years from now or something like that, uh, $10 million, maybe not even that long, but you know what I mean. Uh, it could be worth $10 million, but I don't think it's going to be worth $10 million in the next sort of, you know, this bull run anyway, definitely not. And I would be surprised if we made it to a million dollars in this uh, bull run. But look, at some stage it could be. But with, you know, this kind of adoption, particularly when retail get in and they really start to, you know, ramp up their purchasing of it once it's in, uh, you know, it's above its all-time high price because unfortunately that's the mentality of most people. They want to buy things when it's at an all-time high. They're like, oh, this is, you know, going off its head. This is the time to grab it. No, when it's at all-time highs, you need to be very careful. And particularly in cryptocurrencies, just realize that you're buying, you know, in price discovery and there's every chance at some stage it's going to uh, go backwards. It doesn't mean, you, you know, you couldn't get in and out quickly and uh, do quite well for yourself. But if you're buying something at all-time highs, it's closer to going down than it really is to continue to go up. You know, depending on how you look at it, that's not exactly true. Because you know, if if we go above twenty thousand in the next two weeks, I would say that we're still going to have months and months and months worth of worth of upside from there. But you know, that's only if Bitcoin uh, and the cryptocurrency uh, you know space in general plays out the same way it has previously, or at least similar to. But we'll wait and see. Something else I found interesting. So three BTC whales move $140 million worth of Bitcoins from Binance. So I would say they have been uh, in the alts market. They have uh, taken the profits from the alts, not sold all their alts. Some of them they probably have, but most of them, I'm going to say they've just taken their profits, put it back into Bitcoin, and now they've taken it uh, off Binance uh, putting it into their own storage. So we can see here 3,000 BTC transferred from Binance, another 8,500 BTC transferred from Binance, and another 1,500 uh, transferred from Binance. So what I believe, uh, this is you know the start of it, as I said, when we're over here, a lot of these were in the red uh, just 24 hours ago. I believe a lot of the profits from all the altcoins uh, have been taken off uh, and they are about to go into Bitcoin and we're going to see that next leg up. That's not guaranteed and it's not financial advice. Uh, I could be wrong and it, again could roll over and we still go down and uh, you know fill that CME gap but it's just generally what happens. When Bitcoin's not doing everything it will sell off a little bit and everyone will get into the alts and once you know people see Bitcoin start to move they quickly sell off uh, the profits from the alts and put it into BC and that's usually what pushes it for the next leg up and I believe that's uh, what's happening at the moment but we'll have to wait and see who knows I could be wrong now last but not least Jim Cramer mad money on uh, CNN so he is now interested in Bitcoin and that is interesting he did a uh, a podcast with Anthony Pompliano uh, and you can see that on YouTube uh, very interesting even he now sees the benefits of cryptocurrencies and he said that it's taken him a long time to learn and you know he's he's watched it for a while and he's you know been critical of it at times but he now has a better understanding of sort of you know what it stands for and he even said that like he spoke about his own children his own children aren't even really interested in gold they're interested in Bitcoin and that is something gold is a bit of that old guard sort of stuff now, don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking gold at all. It has its place. I, you know, I have some gold, but it's crypto uh, currency. Uh, it's gold-backed cryptocurrency that I have, so I don't have the physical gold. Uh, but it's from a reputable company here in Australia, Ainsley Wealth, uh, regulated and all the rest of it. So it is backed by real gold. Uh, but that's the gold I, uh, I have. Uh, you know, whether I'll buy the real gold in the future, I don't know. Because, you know, when you own real gold, you've got to pay for it to be stored somewhere. You can't really take it home. And then if you do have it home, at home, you'd want to have it in some big, you know, crazy safe and guarded and all the rest of it. So, yeah, gold, it is the old guard. 
Bitcoin, it's, you know, as people have stated a number of times, it's digital gold. And that's where the future is going. And that's what the young kids are into. Uh, so that is why this space is going to be so big in the future. Again, not to say gold won't have a place. It will have a place. But it's not going to have the same kind of adoption that Bitcoin will in the future. You can take Bitcoin to any country. All you got to do is have a USB stick in your bag. And you go on holidays to wherever and you've got all that money with you. You can't do that with gold. It doesn't work like that. Uh this is pretty big particularly like he's talking about you know getting into bitcoin and you know investing at least just some into bitcoin uh, and anthony pompliano you know spoke to him and jim kramer said that uh he's invested in fidelity uh so the digital assets company they're not just digital assets but they have a digital assets assets branch and his biggest thing was is he didn't really, you know, understand, you know, how to store Bitcoin and all the rest of it, you know, a little bit old school, you know, not 100% up to date with, you know, new technology and all the rest of it. And Anthony Pompliano told him that Fidelity have a digital asset, she's going to pay a premium for it, but they have a digital assets group. And he said, oh, well, I've got, you know, a lot of money with Fidelity. And uh, so that's what got him interested. And he said, because he just didn't want the hassle of cryptocurrencies, having to learn all this new stuff and making sure he doesn't lose it, you know, and all the rest of it. And now that he knows uh, Fidelity, who he already uh, has some money with, and I think he said a majority of his holdings was, was with Fidelity, that they have a digital assets uh, branch, he's going to get involved in that. So that is big. Uh, again, you know, these big people... Uh, with a lot of influence, Joe Rogan, you know, Anthony Pompliano as well, you know, he's good, but these, you know, sort of generally non-crypto space people who are all of a sudden getting into it, that is what's really going to push uh, things higher and higher. And even Peter Schiff, you know, old sh old shifty shifty, <laughs> he's, you know, bagged out on Bitcoin for a long time, but he had the tweets going before that, you know, he's his son's into Bitcoin. And that just goes to show that, you know, he is behind the eight ball, but his son's obviously going to lead the way and he understands the future that, you know, that old guard of gold is going to be a smaller and more niche market. And Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and digital currencies, they are the future. That's where things are going. Central bank CBD is going to be coming out any time. Banks are now taking custody of cryptos it is the future. It's happening and the old guard will be left behind, unfortunately, and miss out on the good gains. And the new guard, you know, they're ahead of the game and they are the future. So interesting times. Again, waiting to see what Bitcoin uh, does. You know, we're above the $10,500 level, which is good. Uh, we haven't even used that as support. We've just kind of punched right through. So really, again, I'm looking for that kind of $11,000 range. Can we sort of get up above there? So we're very close. We're not too far off. We've wicked fairly close to it. But really, we need to sort of get back to where we were before, you know, roughly 11500 thereabouts-ish. And then we really need to t test that $12,500 level. I don't think we're going to punch through it anytime soon. And if we do, and it's something like this, I would expect to see something like this uh, not long after as well. The markets are still, you know, I don't want to say highly manipulated, but they are definitely manipulated. And if you own, you know, enough Bitcoin, you can, you know, adjust the market will uh, be the way I will say it as opposed to manipulate the market. You can adjust the market uh, sort of accordingly at times. So tread carefully in this space. Uh, I still think Bitcoin's uh, a great price to buy and i'll probably buy some in the next few days you know anything really under the old old the old the all-time high our old all-time high i think is still a good buy i think once we go through our old all-time high i'm not sure if we'll ever come back uh and see that again could do uh the next bottom of the bull market maybe but i think with so much institutional adoption and things like that and retail's really going to get on board uh it wouldn't surprise me if we don't ever see Bitcoin under 20,000 uh, once it hits its next all-time high. We could definitely push above 20,000. So if I just scale out a bit. So we could definitely punch above 20,000 at some stage and maybe get up to sort of thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 and then have a pretty heavy correction and dip down below 20,000 again. But I think once we reach our next peak uh, in this bull market, 
I don't think we'll uh, see under 20,000 again. Although, you know, there is a bit of speculation and even I somewhat suspect that maybe the bottom of the next bear market might be that $9,600 CME gap. We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train. Go Bitcoin. And I'll see you next time.